Income Tax 2022-2023. IRA Deduction Tax Software Example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040, populating it with Lacert Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related schedules and forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point as normal, single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents, 100,000 W-2 income. We got the 12,950 for the standard deduction, getting us to the taxable income, 87,050. Mirroring that over here on our worksheet in a formula, formula. the format, the 100,000 income, 12,950 and the taxable income 87,050 letting the software do the tax getting us to that page two of 14774 15,000 on the withholdings brings us to the 226 at the bottom line for the starting time let's go back on over and now we're thinking about the ira deductions so we're starting off with the single filer. Normally the IRAs are gonna be fairly straightforward if someone doesn't have access to another uh, type of retirement plan would be the general rule. Then we can deduct uh, 6,000 or 7,000 depending on if we're younger or older age 50. The rules get more complicated when we're moving to possibly a married filing joint return. And if we have access to, or if our spouse has access to a 401k plan, 403b, or other type of uh, retirement plan. So that's the general idea. Remember also that when we're looking from a tax planning standpoint and a tax preparation standpoint, the IRA is oftentimes the last thing that we can do. We can't, we can't do it from the extension point, meaning we have to be putting money into an IRA by the time we file. Uh, the deadline april 15th generally or april 18th 17th or whatever but we have to put it in by that point not including the extensions but if we're I'll support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it able to get to say a client for example and do their tax return before the deadline we want to be able to advise them that hopefully they can have some cash on hand that could put possibly put into an IRA and we can determine at that point in time the maximum amount that they can put into the IRA, which is great because if they can put money into say a 401k plan or a 403b plan, the idea would be maximize those out if you've got the cash flow to do it generally. And then after the, the year has ended, we might still be able to do some last minute tax planning, not for the 401k, not for the 403b, because you have to put that money in by the end of December, but we might be able to do some last minute planning for the IRA. All right, that's the general idea here. So let's say single filer, a lot of software will allow us to kind of jump to, to the IRA to do the calculation and also give us some, uh, some information let's go to page two of this item in in the diagnostics to see if we could still put money into the ira so for example this software if i say i want to put the maximum in so let's say i've completed the tax return and i said i want you to put the maximum ira contribution in that's a number one then it's going to max out the contribution which in this case is the six thousand dollars because the w-2 income i put over here notice I indicated that it's not that we don't have access to a 401k plan at all to take that kind of off the table. So if I go back into my wages, this box right here for the retirement plan is important to check off or not check off when you're trying to figure out whether or not you could put money into uh, the IRA and that would be indicated on 
the W-2. So now we've got the 6,000 that's being put in place on the Schedule 1, page 2, right here. And of course, that pulls over to line 26, which pulls in to page 1 of the Form 1040. And there's the 6,000 above the line deduction, bringing the AGI, the adjusted gross income to 94,000. The 12,950 for the standard deduction gets us to the 81,050. I can mirror that over here in our tax software, looking at the adjustments to income and go on to the adjustments to income tab. Do I have anything for an IRA? I've got an IRA deduction up here with one line. So I'll just say 6,000. Pulling that over to the first page, 100,000 minus the 6,000, 94,000 minus the standard deduction, 12,950 gets us to the 81,050. And that matches what we have here. Tax salt, we're doing the tax calculation, 13,454. Let's plug that in here, 13,454. And that gets us to the 1,546 at the bottom. So there we have that. So now let's assume that the taxpayer does have access to a 401k plan through their work. Now note, if you have access, access to a 401k plan through the work, it's similar in concept to an IRA, but you don't have to do anything on the tax return because box one of the W-2 will be decreased already. So you kind of like already got the deduction it being deducted from box one of the W-2, therefore it's deducted before it even reaches, in essence, the tax return. So for example, if I go back on over here and I say, I'm gonna say that they have access to the retirement plan, then uh, down below, here's the 401k. This would be the amount you could put in for the, the amount that goes into the retirement plan that uh, would be shown there on box 12, I think, box 12. And the software is disallowing the IRA now because I had access to the 401k plan. So I believe the general rule would be if you have a 401k plan or other retirement plan at work, you could take the full deduction if your modified AGI is 68,000 or less, right? So let's bring this down to 68,000 and see if we get the, see if the software populates it. So we'll go, okay, let's bring this down to 68,000, boom. And so, so now the 6,000 uh, is back, right? So there's our, our kind of income threshold because I had access to the 401k plan, even though I didn't put that I put anything into the 401k plan. Now, if you go between 68 and I think 78, then it's gonna start to phase out. So I'm gonna say, let's, let's go to like 70,000 and then it starts to to phase out now i only get 4800 notice the nice tool here in that i told the software to maximize the contribution so it's basically if i populated everything properly hopefully given me the correct result uh, in terms of how much i can put into uh, the ira and then if i go up to let's say 70 let's go to let's go to 80,000. Oh, well let's just do 78,000. it should be gone again Seventy-eight thousand and it has now disappeared once again. All right, so now it gets messy with a married couple. So let's change it to a married couple now. So I'm gonna go back on over and say they're married. Now it's important when doing the data input when married to indicate that this is the spouse, right? So that you have to have, you have to be able to apply it out so the software knows that, that they can play, apply out the limits based on uh, each individual spouse and these of course are in the order of the first the first one being the taxpayer the first one you enter into the software the taxpayer the second one that you list is going to be the spouse right so that you got to get that straight so that it can do the proper calculation let's say that they both have uh have let's say the second one is fifty thousand, and they neither of them have a retirement plan let's imagine so neither of them have a retirement plan to start with. I can then maximize the contribution and I could say, well, if they're married, the max is not 6,000, it should be twice that. And I'm gonna go back on over to page two and I can jump to the data input and say, let's state number one for both of them saying maximize for each of them. So now it comes up to 12,000, of course. Now the max contribution could increase if they're older than 50 as a general rule. So 
So let's do that. Let's change the age. So I changed the age for just one spouse. And now you've got 13,000, which was uh, the, the 6,000 for one and the 7,000 for the other. So let's bring it back. I'm going to bring it back down to so they both get the 6,000. So they're both under 50. And now let's say that one of the spouses, let's say the first spouse on their W-2 has a retirement plan. So now they've got a retirement plan, which would be indicated on the W-2. And so I'm going to go back on over and say, now it's been limited to 6,000 because it, it basically said, well, the other one, it got removed on the other one, which is kind of what you might expect, right? You'd say, okay, well, if they had access to the 401k, but there's an income threshold. So if I bring the threshold back under like 109,000, I believe. So notice my total income right now is 150. So let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to a, under 109,000. So let's say this is like minus 40, which will bring it down to to one to. So let's check that out. So 140. I meant to say 40,000. So I brought, I brought it down to 109. Is that's what I was trying to do? So 109,000. And so now it's at the 12,000 again. So it's been basically allowed, even though we had the 401k. So we have both of them in place. If it's between uh, 109 and 129, so let's increase it a little bit. Let's say I, I increase it by like 5,000. So now it's at 114. So if I go back on over, now it's it's phasing out one of them, right? So it's phase it's it's basically phasing out one's spouse is at 6,000, the other's at the 4,500. And then if I go up above above ground, I believe 129, then then it'll be removed once again. Now, what if we have a situation? Let's concentrate on the other spouse. And let's say our income for, for this spouse that has a retirement plan is quite high, 200,000. The second spouse doesn't have the retirement plan, but they only made 50,000. So, and they still could be limited in this situation due to the first spouse having such a, a, a high income. So if I go back on over now, we see as we max out uh, the retirement plans that we don't have anything. So the general rule there is uh, if, if married filing jointly and your spouse has a 401k, you can take the full deduction for your IRA contribution as long as your modified adjusted gross income is less than 204,000. It's gotta be less than you know the 204,000. So that's, that gets a fairly, you know, relatively high threshold, but you can see how those kind of rules start to start to interplay. They get quite complex actually. Uh, when you get into the age limitations, all the combinations that you could think of, right? If you've got the age limitation, so usually you'd want to be memorizing that you can have the 6,000. If you're if you're older, over 50, it goes up to 7,000. If you don't have any other 401k or someone else has access to the 401k and wage limits, but if you have access to a 401k, then there's going to be uh, limitations in terms of how much you might be able to deduct. And if married, even if your spouse has uh, access to a 401k, that still might limit, you know, each spouse's access to being able to deduct depending on the income threshold, which you would probably be dependent to some degree on the software to help you calculate, which you can calculate uh, as a last minute kind of tax planning thing. Therefore, the general strategy would be max out your 401k plans before 2022 has ended because you can't put any more in there for the tax year 2022 or whatever tax year you're talking about until uh, after that date. And then we can see if we can maximize any, any added amount with the IRA and use the software to do that calculation, obviously in order to take advantage of any kind of deduction related to an IRA or retirement plan, you need to have cash flow available to be putting the money into it.